Who says life moves too fast? They're talking to us. Up in Alberta, you better be a patient hunter. We are taking a beating. But always be ready, because bird hunting up here ain't cushy. And when Alberta takes, she gives back. Oh, there goes the bird. In spades. Rooster! The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Pheasants Forever. Just the three wood. That's all it takes from downtown Calgary to get to a pretty special place. It's called Scirocco, a golf club where the game includes pheasants. Aha. Aha. There's pheasant rock. Pheasant rock. Their history up here. This is where the first pheasant was released in this province. You ever see birds here? Oh, lots of birds here. We have the descendants of the original pheasants here still. Exactly why I've come to Canada, in search of North America's northernmost population of still wild pheasants. And we can go to the south there too. Yep, Alberta ringnecks get people talking. Maybe we should leave Game one behind. Level. Especially these guys, members of Pheasants Forever Chinook chapter. Okay, well you leave Eternal the way. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, where to go? Yeah. Can you tell we're in Canada? Shotguns, Outdoor Canada hats, and hockey sticks. Rumor is the wind's gonna blow today. That's a little breezy. Pretty fitting, I'll put in my prairie storms. Today we hunt a piece of private land, a couple hundred acres that are supposed to be peppered with wild birds. But so far, nothing. <laughs> no, it's good fun. It's good exercise and it's great for the dogs. And how else are you going to get that much fresh air on a weekend? Kevin Burton swears if there are birds here, his dog Lexus will find them. Lexus, she's a German short haired pointer. She's six years old, and yes, she's named after the car. We kind of figured if we if we keep buying these dogs, we'll never afford those cars. So. Even with the best dog around, we can't seem to find any birds. What's happened is as is, is life has gotten a little tougher on the birds, they really need this wild country for them to live. And, and it seems like now the only way to get them is in this really rugged country. See, Alberta's hunting reputation has tanked a bit in recent years. Alberta's government offers no public hunting land. I mean, zero. So these guys put all their efforts into rehabbing big plots of private land. Oh, ducks. Ducks. Quack, quack, quack. It might seem like an uphill battle, but it's worth the work. If I didn't do it, who else would? Don't believe me? Watch this. We used to hunt out to the west of Medicine Hat, more so in the irrigation country. <laughs> and, uh, right in the middle of our interview, <laughs> the payoff. They call this the car coolie. <laughs> I hear a bird. What do you have, Lexi? Okay, there it goes. Another one? Another rooster. There was two roosters and some others. Ten, ten. Way down there in the corner, we catch a peek at a covey of hunts. There they go. Oh, there goes a bird. Looks like a hen. Boy, look at the bird. Rooster! 
be gone. Rasp will go. There it goes. Rooster, rooster. Good shot. Hi, girl. Good girl. Thank you. So how'd that feel? Felt good. Oh good, that should feel like a miracle today. <laughs> Figures Merv would get first bird. There's just time for one snapshot. How lucky I was on him. He doesn't miss too often. That little 28 gauge he shoots better than all of the rest of us. Maybe it's karma. See, Merv might be Medicine Hat's biggest conservation mind. He's one of the guys that was instrumental in starting Pheasants Forever in Canada. Our chapter, absolutely. Right, right, right. Rooster! Bring it here, Alexis, come on. Alexis. Alexis, come on. Oh my God. That's pretty much how it's gone today. So our Alberta adventure starts with a bang. More ahead, just as this hunt climbs to seriously new heights. Most folks depend on coffee for their morning kick. The mine comes from the view. That's buddy Bob Hazel. He runs Pheasants Forever Calgary. And Bob's got a serious hunting hookup in these hills. Well, if we can actually get there. They're talking to us. Morning, boys and girls. Geez, you think Chloe's excited? See, up in these foothills, we expect some of Alberta's best wild hunting habitat. Ah, two hour drive, it's time to go play. I'm Mark Daly. Bill Shirk, nice How to meet you. Glad to meet you. Appreciate you having us. Mark there, he's a rancher. And rumor is, he knows where to find the birds. I think we've got a good habitat on our ranch, so uh, I've noticed the birds uh, doing quite well the last few years. I'm already overwhelmed. Where do you even start? Look at this. We're hunting sharp-tailed grouse, a close relative of the prairie chicken. They're fairly large spotted brown and white birds that like prairie habitat. If we just walk over this way to the northwest. Mark says he sees them up here when he's out ranching. You're not gonna make fun of shooting, are you? Oh, yeah, I probably will. <laughs> Great. In terrain like this, you better own good boots and have lots of water. I'm just blown away. I mean, here's the thing. You talk about hunting draws. Normally, we're hunting things that are like three or 400 yards long. This draw is like 10 or 12 miles long. All right, Bob, shells in. In Alberta, everyone wants to chase pheasants. That's the most popular game bird up here. Number two a dedicated crowd of hun hunters and sharpies for sharp-tailed grouse. They're almost forgotten in this part of the world. The challenge, finding one pocket of birds. Boy, look at her going. She's definitely getting a little excited about life. Wild, open country. Definitely the West. Bob hunts Chloe. A sharp black lab I've hunted behind before. Chloe is pure black lab and she's seven years old. Her hunting strengths, she's got a huge heart and she's a strong retriever. But her quirk, <laughs> Bob says Chloe likes to eat and eat a lot. A lot of sign down in here. And no, they're not cow pies. Birds have been here. We're in primo sharpie habitat. They love the short stuff. 
first walk kind of through it. Saw some signs, no birds. But we know this is where they hang out. Way out from the truck, we actually end up on a lek. That's a mating area for sharptails. I've seen 30 or 40 birds here. And then there's one over here two miles where I'll see maybe 100 birds. But they ain't around today. We are taking a beating. Man, there's a flush. This is supposed to be some of the most primo stuff in all of Canada, certainly Alberta, so they're here. We just gotta find the dang things. After four hours of this, my shotgun's down. Looks like this so-called hot spot went cold. Look at the size of that buck. Holy man. Wow. I'm starting to think we need to be doing a deer hunting show, Bob. <laughs> you gotta be prepared to walk, unlike any other bird that, that we hunt around here. Oh, we're still walking, but before this trip is over, bird. Sharpie hunting might change me. Two birds down, two birds down. Look at them go, look at them go. We're packing on the miles high in Alberta's Porcupine Hills. Somewhere up here is supposed to be Canada's best population of sharp tail grouse, but so far, not a thing. As far as I'm concerned, the birds that I hunt, it's the, it's the most challenging bird. Wide open spaces, wide open spaces. Not a telephone post and uh, very little wire around us. Up on a random grassy flat. Bird, bird, bird. Two birds down, two birds down. Look at them go, look at them go. We finally spook a big covey of birds. You can't describe it, you just react. We got two birds here. I've got two, Bob. Just gonna grab that one. Yep, got that bird, that's one. Come on, Chloe, come on. A double on the first birds we see. Hold, hold, give, thank you. Better go thank Bill. I still need to find that second bird. Right over in here. Oh. So they fly a long way. We gotta get more shells in. Dead bird, dead bird. Second bird should be right in here. I use an old trick trying to find that thing. If I can't find a bird right away, I drop my hat on the spot I marked. That way, as you move around, you never lose that first mark. Oh, there it is. Sure enough, that second Sharpie hides in the grass Girl. just a couple steps away. Girl. Boy, they ran us through the ringer. That's one bird, there's the second. Hold. What a way to be baptized into sharp tails in Alberta. Holy moly. These are big, beautiful, wild birds. My heart's kind of pumping after that. That fast, our Sharpie hunt goes from bust to bang. There's birds. Good job. Whoa! Good job. Good job, Bob. Nice shot. Good girl. There it comes. Bob, things are looking up all of a sudden. Hold. Hold. Give. Thank you. Buddy, give it up. Woo! Oh, cow. So this has been an awesome little barrage here. Bird. Good shot, Dale. Need to wait on that one for a bit until the dog was out of the way and it was up at least a little bit. Good job. This is becoming outrageous. In the last 10 minutes, we've flushed probably 15 birds. They were all pushed on this side of the hillsides and they're just tucked in here. Oh my gosh. Boy, it's something. The porcupines proved magical. Sort of makes up for the, the balance of the day. <laughs> Another buck up there. Look at the size of that one. No wonder Mark likes to deer hunt here. 
birds keep flushing, and the wild critters scatter. What was that? And all seems right on the perfect Porcupine Hills hunt. It's just the where you hunt sharp tails. Look at how beautiful it is out here. A lot of work to, to get some birds, but we finally found the mother load, and uh, I'll remember this day for a while. Oh my gosh, I slept like a rock last night. Well, the thing is, when you're in a far away place like this, you don't want to sleep in. You want to be up before the sun to see what the next day brings. And I think today's going to be a good one. It's a cold Alberta morning, and I'm waiting on a hunting buddy. Yesterday, Bob Hasem and I experienced a near epic sharp tail hunt. Today, a break from the birds to play the name game. They call that carnage. Fat Albert. Hey, hey, hey. Trina's double decker, the bank robber, the sideshow. How can you not buy a fly that's called carnage? Seriously. I kind of like those club sandwiches, too. When Bob's not hunting, he's here, hanging in the fly shop. We're fishing with greatness. That's Magnum P.I. I am so excited. It's been five years since I've been up here. This river has always been kind of a little slice of magic to me. Bob's got 40 years on Alberta's Bow River. Put the plug in? Yo, I never take it out. <laughs> Today, we're drifting his favorite stretch. I like big water. I've always liked it big water. I'd rather fish this river than small creeks in the mountains. Bob is a super hardened guide with a sense for moving water. Slowly. We drift out of Calgary and out into the country. I'm happy to be here. This time of year means hopper fishing. You know, drifting flies that look a lot like the big old grasshoppers up on the bow's banks. As our morning quickly drifts away, the fishing isn't exactly hot. Man, I get anxious. Oof. <laughs> Why would I expect today to be any different from the rest of this darn Alberta adventure? I'm a dreamer. I keep looking at that hopper, thinking it's just gonna get pounded. Fact is, I'm starting to think that full moon's playing tricks on this trip. We're three hours into fishing. We haven't seen a single thing. What do you do? You just keep on casting. So that's a good spot right where it is. Okay. I'm looking forward to that, <clears throat> that moment when the big fish hits. There we go. There we go. Oh. Finally, we're hooked up. It's coming to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's just stretching, that's all. He's just stretching, that's a dandy. <laughs> all right. I want to be gentle with this fish. Oh, I've never been so nervous trying to catch a fish in my life. What gives? Come on, baby. Okay. Don't lean over, don't lean over. Oh, nice. Woo. Look at that sucker. Oh my gosh, what a dandy first fish, Bob. Yeah. Oh, cow. <clears throat> God, what a trip. That's the story this week. See it all. The whole time we've had to work. Maybe that's why we love this outdoor stuff so much. Heck, on our last afternoon. The dogs are kind of coming together here. Rooster, rooster! We hook up with the Chinook chapter guys and end our trip and, and, and with an awesome hunt. Rooster! That's a hard shot. 
without sounding too sentimental, you get a bird here. Um, it's a different thing. It's not like shooting a rooster in a South Dakota field. There's a lot. You feel like you've just gone through a lot more work to get that bird here. It's, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty amazing. Oh, there goes a couple. And, and, and. Good shot. That is about the shot of the day. Four, five, six hens gets up and he picks out the rooster and drops it. That was awesome. Nice shot. Curtis, I thought it was you. Yeah, no, I never got never got a shot off. He was on the ground before I had a chance. <laughs> Merv did it again. Now, if you decide to travel north to Alberta, don't plan on fields full of CRP. Plan on an adventure. It's the west here, and it still feels wild. <laughs> I suppose that's why I keep coming back. There goes. <laughs>